What, what, what's good homies and welcome back to another episode of our West Tigers Rebuild Series Season 2 Episode 4 and today we're taking on the second place Cronulla Sharks Alright so as you can see here they've gotten off to a pretty decent start winning 3 from 4 games As for us we're coming off back to back wins against both the Rabbitohs and the Warriors So before we get into the game I have made one change to our lineup I'm still not too sure on what our back line will look like heading into the finals but until then there will most likely be a couple of ins and outs. I'll be trying out a couple of combinations, mainly focusing on that right side because our left side's pretty much set with Nangama and Nofu Luma. Also I was going to give Matt Eisenhuth another run but during the sim he actually got injured and is out for 6 months so rip to that idea. Alex Tuo on the other hand, he'll be back pretty soon. Alright, so we'll be playing at Southern Cross Group Stadium, home of the Cronulla Sharks. And uh, as we await the arrival of the players here, we've got some new signings in their back five with Dugan at the back, Aaron Gray on the wing, and I think everything else is pretty much the same. The only other new signing I'm pretty sure was an ex-Tiger, and he's on the bench. It's our ex-front rower, Eva Selmanu Fagai. So we're going to start things off with the Sharks in attack. As Fafida tries to crash his way over the line, but we're going to hold him up there. On the 4th, as they go short to Townsend, and he's going to be the one to pull off that cheesy animation. They send it up to check the grounding, but there's going to be no worries. They will get the green lights and open the scoring off a uh, Chad Townsend run. Alright, so we're with Chad here to take the 2 points and convert his own try. From right in front, as you'd expect, he nails the two, and they're going to go up by six points. Interesting to see that Maloney isn't taking the conversions. As we jump into our first attacking set here, Russell Packer makes it past the halfway line. He's around 45 meters out. Second tackle. Another cutout pass. This time it's Matalino who breaks the line, and he's going to make it to their 15. On the third, set up to the left, we go to Brooks and a beautiful inside ball. Nice little outside inside, back to Packer who initially got us on the front foot, along with Ben Matsulino. Alright, as we take another look here on the replay, I don't think it was an actual inside ball play. I think it might be the shape that I usually go wide on. I usually uh, send it out to Nangama and sometimes it gets him through the line untouched. I'm not too sure if that was the actual shape that was used here, but... It was a pretty slick play nonetheless as we take one more look here. The cutout ball to Lawrence and he finds Packer back on the inside. Man, they actually just love it when a set play comes together. A lot of trial and error goes into pulling off a play. I mean, most of the time you'll probably get dropped or you'll probably run into a brick wall. But like I said in the last video, once you actually execute a play, it's pretty damn satisfying. As we jump back in attack here with Packer through the line, massive hole around the ruck. 5 meters out, 3rd tackle, another inside ball play to the right as we try and send Aloyai crashing through the line but he runs into a brick wall. We set up for another inside ball to the right but we're going to feint that way, run it back to the left side as we go to Lawrence, gets the offload away to Nengama as he pulls off some beautiful sleight of hand to get it out to his winger, no for Luma. And they're going to set that up as a no try but you'll see on the replay here, we actually get the grounding, a nice little dive to finish. As we uh, get the green lights here, I want to take a look at that try once again. Alright, so as you can see here, the obvious feint to the right. Chris Lawrence with a nice run and flick pass. Draws in two defenders and the beautiful quick hands by Nangama. And Nofo Luma with the finish. It wasn't a set play, but I didn't have an idea of what I wanted to do. And we pretty much executed our plan to a T. As we failed to add the extras there for Lolo here. And we're going to lead by four points. Back in attack here, as Fanua takes it out from dummy half, we try and drop it under to Packer, and he gets smashed in the tackle. I think we just got a little too comfortable there, trying to work plays instead of just simply heading it up, especially when we're inside our 20. As Seo Manu Fengai goes on a nice little run here, he's going to make it 5 meters out from our line, and we're going to purposely hold him down. With under 5 remaining, I thought that uh, that would have been our best option, just to give them the 2 points. As Townsend converts it from right in front, slots the two, gets them within two, with three and a half minutes remaining in the half. Alright, so we're back with the Sharks here, looking for a try before the break. 
as Seki Ava races at a dummy half, catches out Marcus offside, fends off Lolo here at the back, and he's gonna race away to score a crucial try just before the break. That's their second of the match as they take the lead. A little rough on the likeness, but it was a great try nonetheless, as Townsend can wrestle from right in front once again, and that gets them out to a four point lead heading into the break. What a shift in momentum, all off the back of that error in our own 20, that then went on to a couple of lapses in defense, and it all happened in under five minutes. Looking at the halftime match, that's as you can see our biggest flaw right now. Four errors, one penalty conceded, our discipline has just been shocking this game. The Sharks on the other hand, on paper, look like they're having a perfect match, with no errors, no penalties conceded, and they've completed all their sets. As Sekiaro loses the ball on the tackle, McQueen looking for the runaway, but he's going to get pulled down on our 40. On the second, as Pekka throws an interception, it was oh, a terrible pass. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be Ricky Liltelli. He steps around two defenders to race away for the Sharks. Third try of the game. That was a pretty poor pass, really, by uh, Pekka. We should have just tucked it under the arm, taking it to the line, but I don't know why I tried to draw and pass. We'll see it on the replay here. We did have the overlap. And for some reason, he didn't draw in the defender. Right into the bread basket for Ricky Lotelli. He still had a bit of work to do as he steps his way past for Noah and both Lolo Hair at the back to race away for a pretty nice try in the end. Man, those small little errors are killing us right now as Townsend converts once again and gets them out to a 10 point lead. A few moments later. So back of the Sharks here in attack, and it's another try. <laughs> I'm not too sure how they got to that point, but it was a pretty decent try. A nice little grubber by Townsend, I think that was. Had it on a string. Jeremy Lattimore on the receive again. He gets on the scoreboard with a four-pointer. And it's going to be Townsend once again, who's now four from four off the boot. All right, so we're finally back in attack with a decent shape to the right. We get it out to McCurick, who gets absolutely <laughs> flattered by Fafita. Scooped up by Seguiara, who cuts back inside Lolo Hair. And he's going to race away for a second try of the game under the posts. I mean, we don't need a replay for that. We all saw what happened there. We just completely ran into the wrong man. Ended up getting sat down as Townsend can rest from right in front. I feel like I've said that like five times already. But we're back in attack again with about two minutes remaining. See if we can score a little consolation try as we go to Brooks. And a nice little drawing pass to Nangama. We get the pass out to Nofu Oluma. And it's going to get wrapped up around 21 meters out from their line. So fourth tackle. We've got Idris running onto it. And he's going to make it towards their 15. Fifth and last. A few seconds remaining. We go to Brooks. Puts up the bomb. And it's a little shallow. As it gets plucked out of the sky by Aaron Gray. And with no one... <laughs> With no one around him, he's going to race away to score on the buzzer. Right as the fat lady sings, Aaron Gray is going to pick up a try of his own and gets the Tigers out to a 36-point scoreline. Back again of Chad Townsend as he slots it from right in front. I think it might be perfect off the boot. We'll take a look anyway on the full-time match stats. As the Sharks celebrate a well-deserved victory, completely smashed us 38 points to 10 i think that might be my biggest loss on the game so far we started off the game pretty strong it was pretty competitive and then from about the 35th minute it was all downhill from there we weren't able to recover in the second half just error after error we even conceded another penalty in the second half as we look at the full-time match stats james sigiaro picks up out of the match and before we dip, as usual, we'll take a look at the player stats. Check out who performed well, check out who didn't. The game has Russell Packer as our MVP, and I kind of agree with that. He was pretty prominent in that first half. I was thinking for losing games, instead of nominating three players or up to three players, the max should be up to two players. And instead of three points, it should be two points and then one point. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on that for games that we lose. As always, drop the like button for more content. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you. you, you. Later. No what it was. Baby, turn me up, baby, turn me up. It was only one night, I was in and out.